YouTube algorithm is changing. And so I'm going to be explaining a few things that I've found after about four and a half years of doing YouTube automation myself. And so with that being said, I teach students on a week to week basis as far as how to actually grow faceless channels. So if you're interested in this type of mentorship, do check out the link down below in the description. But after having taught a lot of students these past couple of months, there are some changes and we have to adapt to what's new and actually working compared to just sticking to old uh, strategies that were working like a year before. So starting off with what's worked before related to YouTube automation or cash cow channels, we have things called first movers advantage. And then we have, oh, we had also a lot less competition back then years ago. What also was working before was a mass scale video creation strategy. Uh, likewise, Googleable content in a video format. And I'll be explaining what each of these points mean. And also starting on pre-monetized channels that also still worked before. With first movers advantage, it basically just meant that if there was no one else doing sports or basketball, and I was the first one to actually start creating a lot of faces videos in sports or basketball, there was a lot of room for me to actually kind of gain views from that crowd. Now, when I was first starting my sports channel as a real example, creating faces videos on popular NBA players like Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, uh, Luka Doncic, there really wasn't a lot of people creating all these faces videos on those certain uh, athletes, for example. Likewise, if we even broaden up our niche and say there's a lot less face, there were a lot less faces videos being created on different celebrities, different cars. Uh, Elon Musk videos weren't around then. Um, a lot of famous buildings weren't around then. Creating faces videos on all these topics, it basically made it easier for us to gain views if we were the only video covering that topic. So first movers advantage, it was a really big thing in play where if you were the first one to create a bunch of how to tutorials on a bunch of videos, you were going to get a lot of views. If you were the first one to create a bunch of tutorials on how to grow on Shopify, you were going to get a lot of views. So a lot of channels succeeded by being there first in terms of they were the first ones to create how to videos. They were the first ones to create faces videos in the UFC niche or in the boxing niche or the MMA niche. So first movers advantage, it's not so much prevalent as much anymore just because it's so crowded. But moving on to what's worked before, we also have competition, okay? So as I was kind of tying to the first point, there was a lot less YouTubers doing faceless YouTube automation years ago, okay? So there was a lot less competition, which means that there was a lot less videos, but the demand for those topics was still there. If anything, it even grew more to this day where there was a higher demand for, let's say, certain sports or certain content. But competition wasn't necessarily such a big thing as compared to it now. Now, if I look at the sports niche, there's a bunch of videos posting about Caitlin Clark when I'm posting about Caitlin Clark, or there's a bunch of videos posting about Luka Doncic when I'm posting about Luka Doncic. So with that competition wasn't so prevalent also back then. Now, mass scale video creation, the strategy of producing a large volume of content quickly it was kind of like throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. So there was a point where in some of my channels I was posting daily and it's honestly just trying out all sorts of TV shows and celebrity names and seeing what sticks. So this mass scale of producing a large volume of content quickly really was a viable strategy to see, okay, if one eventually stuck and actually went into the YouTube algorithm, it would gain like a million plus views and that would in essence pay for all the other previous videos that didn't work. This mass scale video creation doesn't work as well today anymore just because you really need to kind of think about your topic and packaging but I'll be going over that later on in the in the video here now in relation to Google book content in video format okay a lot of the content being produced and probably still today was basically just taking a Google article and turning it into a video format and so this type of content was working back then but nowadays it kind of lacks opinion and it lacks experiences a really good format or strategy to grow on YouTube channels is to document your own experiences or document your own opinions and and just finding Google articles online and just turning it into a video format, that worked before. But right now, what I'm trying to, what I usually find is that if you're video is easily found in a Google article, it's probably not unique enough. So I do hire team members or contractors who are able to add opinions and experiences to the article. And that ultimately does make it a more unique video when the final product is done. Now, starting on a pre-monetized channel, this is kind of like a gray area. This can still work today, but a lot of people will argue that if you start on a pre-monetized channel, okay, 
there's a chance that you can get demonetized, but there's also a chance that you can stay monetized as well. So I like to play it safer just because I know I can grow channels from scratch. So most of my new channels, they do just end up growing from zero to a thousand and getting monetized organically. It's safer that way. Those type of channels that are grown from scratch tend to stay monetized as well from my experience. But starting with a pre-monetized channel, you most certainly can do that. I just wouldn't recommend it, but even so, you do start to make money from day one, in which if you get videos to go, go into the algorithm, you are gonna start making money rather quickly. So I have had channels where I've gotten like 300,000 views and I wasn't monetized yet. So those are kind of like a bummer. So it's pros and cons. With pre-monetized channels though, I just don't like the risk that is taken on when it comes to starting on them. Now, moving on to what works now, okay? So we're moving on a shift from first mover's advantage to only mover's advantage, uh, niching down browse-based strategies, search-based strategies. We have longer videos and AI tools. From first mover to only mover, okay? This is a thing that I really preach in our community where if you can be the only one talking about a certain topic, okay? If you can be the only one talking about a certain topic, you'll win by default. This will kind of flow over to like browse based strategies where if there's like a main event that happens right a main event that happens let's say the lakers win the nba championship even though they didn't but if that's the main event you have to think like all the major news outlets and publication outlets they are all going to be talking about how the lakers won the championship so what you have to think about is like what is a topic that only you're going to be covering that's still related to the nature or the main event but isn't exactly the main event. So a spinoff topic will be like how the Lakers cheated their way to the NBA championship. So while everyone is talking about how the Lakers won the championship, you're going to be like the sub branch that talks about how the Lakers cheated their way to the NBA championship. And that sub branch kind of ties into being the only topic that's talking about how the Lakers cheated their way to winning an NBA championship. When you start to think about it from like an only movers perspective where you're the only person covering that topic, it really makes YouTube automation a lot easier, I'd say. If you're the only one titled that way in a video, if you're the only one covering that topic, if you're the only one talking about this in that video, you'll usually win by default, especially if that topic relates to a trend that's currently happening. From moving from first mover to only mover is a really viable strategy that's worked for me. And it kind of takes a lot of like creativity or out of the box thinking in order to do this strategy. But once you try to understand like, okay, let's start moving from uh, being the, let's start moving towards being the only person covering this topic, even though the topic is still trending, it'll help gain, it'll help your videos gain more views in a rather shorter period of time. Now, moving on to the next point, we have niching down. And so we, I found that niching down is a lot easier to grow in. So back before I used to start with like general TV shows channel, I'll, I'll use this as like a real example that I've done before. I'll start with like general TV show channels. And what I've kind of realized, like there were certain TV shows that would tend to work for me. And so eventually like months down the road, I, would, I actually created a niche specific TV show channels targeting like a singular universe or TV show. And that's what actually worked for me. With niching down, you have like specific TV shows, specific celebrities, specific types of cars, or specific AI programs or softwares. This goes towards the niche level or even the topic level, like the actual topics of your videos, where if you can actually make them niche enough, you'll have like a really specific target and well-defined audience. And it just helps your video to be found and recommended to those other audience members. Niching down is one thing that's worked for me quite well and is still working down now. I would say out of 10 videos, if you're posting like 10 times per month, seven can be like really, really narrow videos and three can be like super evergreen videos. So what I mean by that is if I'm in sports, three of my videos might be related to top 10 NBA athletes who uh, never won a ring or never won a championship. That's like a very spe or general video topic. But then the other seven videos will be talking about like specific player names, how Bronny James uh, got into the Lakers, how LeBron James is going to retire. So actual specific names of celebrities or names of anything usually narrows down your video topic to be specific enough. Now, in relation to browse-based strategies versus search-based strategies, I'll try to explain this the best way that I possibly can. But based on your niche, you're probably gonna have like one or two main strategies to go towards. It's trying to get browse-based traffic and then it's also, or, or it's trying to get search-based traffic. So search-based traffic, it's, I'll start with the easier one. It means targeting a specific long tail keyword phrase that you wanna input into the title of your video and also in your description. 
that's as basic as it gets as far as like optimizing your video goals for search-based strategies. And the strategy there is that if your video is ranking for how to fix uh, an iMac uh, computer, if you rank, if you try to make a video rank for how to fix an iMac computer, you are just gonna get a steady amount of views over a long period of time. So the difference there is that search-based strategy videos you don't really need to be looking at your first 40 hour analytics just because a lot of the search terms that you're trying to target may not be trending. Now, it's a case by case scenario here in which maybe you're targeting a search term that is trending right now, so you should be getting views in the first 40 hours, but you really have to think about it in a niche by niche perspective. If you're trying to rank for search based videos, is the topic that you're targeting, is it actually trending right now to the point where it's in demand right now? Because if it's not, then you shouldn't be taking into account like your first 40 hour analytics if your first 40 hour analytics don't matter. Now, in contrast to that, you have browse based strategies. And this is like where my bias or specialty goes towards where I like to target upcoming things. So upcoming events, uh, TV show releases, movie releases, um, upcoming sporting events, upcoming trades. So with those upcoming events where it's trending now, the first 40 hour analytics mean a lot more to me. So I'm actually keeping a careful eye on what my CTR is. I'm keeping a careful eye on how many views I got, on what the average reiteration is. But in contrast to search-based strategies, it's a very common problem that I see people have. And I'll explain this more towards the end where they'll have like a browse-based niche or they'll have like a search-based niche, but then they're looking at it from like a browse-based strategy perspective. So just keeping in mind whether or not your first 40-hour analytics makes sense. Like if you make a video called like 10 ways to detoxify your kidneys, that's not necessarily like a trending topic right now. So you can't really make any logical judgments based on the first 40 hours performance on a video topic like that. Just thinking about it, browse-based strategies versus search-based strategies. I do have channels in both right now. Uh, search-based, I've been probably about like just short of a year in, but I really love search-based channels. They're, I think they're absolutely amazing. It's a lot more steady compared to browse-based channels, but browse-based channels definitely bring a lot more money within a shorter period of time. Now, moving on to the next strategy that's working right now, it's the power of longer videos. So this is in comparison with your competition, but rule of thumb for me right now is before I used to create videos that were at least eight minutes long, but to kind of separate myself from the competitions, right now what I'm trying to do is actually create videos that are over 15 minutes long, so almost doubling my length. The benefits of creating a longer video is that if you have an eight minute video and I have a 16 minute long video, it's very hard for someone to watch the entirety of your eight minute video, okay? That's 100% watch time. So even if let's say hypothetically that someone does, you get eight minutes of watch time. All someone needs to do is watch at least 50% of my video and then my video will start building more watch time per view. A 16 minute long video versus an eight minute long video, I'm going with longer videos. And we've also had some students actually start targeting longer videos and it's just been beneficial for their channel. And instead of creating like three eight minute long videos, they'll put those funds and capital into creating like a 24 minute long video and that 24 minute long video will actually perform well. So longer videos, it can improve watch time and it can improve how well your video performs. So with that being said, moving on to uh, the last one, which is ledger leveraging AI tools. So with AI tools, this is a more newer thing that I'm actually implementing within my system. So one of my systems will now be actually creating videos through uh, AI usage. So the typical format is like creating a video with an actual script writer, an actual voiceover artist, an actual video editor, but now we're actually creating videos utilizing AI entirely. So here I've just listed a few tools, 11 Labs, Claude, ChatGPT. I've actually posted just a handful of videos using AI and some of them have already surpassed like 400,000 to 600,000 views already. So I've had a good handful of videos already go viral utilizing AI, which is really, really neat. Utilizing AI to actually reduce your costs, utilizing AI to actually make your processes more efficient, and also allow you to actually post more videos. That is something that's also working right now as well. The real problem that people have, I'd say, is that they're choosing difficult niches, okay? If you see it working on YouTube, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just have to do something that's very, very similar to them. So if you see my sports channel, for example, that's working and you want to make a sports channel like mine, you really just have to like be really detailed as far as noticing what's working on my channel and then applying it to work on your channel. So people 
I'd say choose pretty difficult niches that aren't meant to work with faceless channels. And also they think that they're modeling successful channels, but when you put the channel side by side, they're completely different. So what I mean by this is maybe I'll have someone come up to me and be like, hey, I'm making a channel like yours. And when I pull up their channel next to my channel, it is really not the same thing. It may be in the same niche, but what you're doing is completely different from what I'm doing. And like I said, you don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to faceless YouTube automation. But time and time again, I see people, uh, this is their channel and this is the model channel and it's just two completely different things. You really have to be detail oriented and see what's working on the successful channel and then apply it to your own channel. So if you're interested in, in a mentorship or community where I can help you grow your faces channel, do check out the link in the description below. We have weekly calls every week. You can reach out to me directly, but thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you all in the next video.